This video is made possible by the following sponsors. Make sure to check out their products as well as the rest of my gear in the description below. Hey guys, Tractor Enthusiast here and welcome back to iRacing for another video. Today marks another episode in our Nord Slifer Hot Lap Challenge and this one is a special one because for this video we're going to be lapping our trusty DHR tractor, the Audi R18. This specifically is the 2016 Audi R18, which raced in the World Endurance Championship in the LMP1 hybrid class, and is probably best known for being a diesel. Yes, the combustion engine in this car is a four liter turbocharged V6 diesel producing somewhere in the region of 500 horsepower. And that was complemented by a six megajoule hybrid motor, which when activated will give about another 400 to 450 brake horsepower. And what that means like its other hybrid counterparts is that when you push the magic button on your steering wheel, you go from 500 to nearly 1000 brake horsepower four-wheel drive meaning this thing's acceleration out of the corners is just absolutely ludicrous i think it's fair to say that i probably know this car better than any car in sim racing at the moment so i'm very curious to see just how fast it will be able to lap around the green hell so without any further delay let's go see how fast our glorious r18 tractor can lap the Nord Slifer. So then you join us on the outlap around here in the Nord Slifer in our trusty tractor, the Audi R18. And the reason why I am not doing a standing start like I usually do for these videos is because I have to make sure I get my tire pressures up and keep them up if I want to go as fast as possible for my flying lap, of course. That's something that you can kind of get away with in the set of Corsa, not so much in high racing. Um, in terms of setup around here, I'm using our spa setup because I think it actually works fairly well around here. A uh, couple of fast corners where the downforce that we have from there uh, uh, help us out here at the Nürburgring as well. And also, the probably the biggest downside is we're lacking a little bit of top speed coming down the back straight, but it should be fine. I'm going to be saving my boost for that. And on that note, we'll very quickly go into the boost. You can see there in the top left-hand corner of the steering wheel, the number which is going up right now, is how much charge I have in the battery. Ideally, I want to start my flying lap with that number reading 100. The number below that is how much uh, of usage I have left on this lap. There's a limit of battery charge you can use over a lap. I've currently used 9% because I'm literally just uh, cruising around right now. But again, the goal really at the end of the flying lap is to have the blue number read zero and the red number read 100. But uh, that might be difficult to do around here. But anyway, guys, I will leave you here and come back to you when we are coming down the back straight. OK, then, so here we are hurtling down the back straight here at the Nord Schleifer, getting ready for our flying lap. One last big braking zone and we should have 100% charge on our battery so we can attack our hot lap properly. Easy on the brakes down here, very easy to hit that bump and go off to the left. I've never done that in practice. No, not this guy. Last corner, down the gear and on the power, four wheel drive on the exit to start our flying lap. Easy over the bump, so easy to lock up there. Big set of marks from someone who did that earlier, definitely not me again. And now we plummet downhill towards Hats and Back. So easy to be flat down here, we've got lots of downforce. Just keep your, uh, your foot pinned to the throttle and all will be good. Car moving around a lot over the bumps as you expect it to. Very long on the brake pedal just to make sure we recharge our hybrid. Watch out for the curbs through here. VR makes it a lot easier to spot, I must say. Easy through here, down one gear, and then back up to third straight away. A little bit of boost on exit, and already the first section over and done with. Boost management is key around here, got to make sure I'm using it properly. Come up, the flue plat car is absolutely glued to the floor, and then through the right handle like it's absolutely nothing. As soon as we get over the crest, we will let gravity help us out. We'll go into sixth gear. There you go, use the diesel, this being a diesel engine, quite talky. Good to shift early, of course. 300 k's there uh, indicated, now the car's going to get a little bit loose over this bump. There you go, just about managed to keep it uh, under wraps. Now long braking zone again, just to make sure we get lots of hybrid left. we we'll use a little bit down here just to get the car rolling, then turn it off, nice. The sense of speed in VR is absolutely fantastic down here. Hopefully it translates in the video somewhat. And now uphill once more, again, just easy on the brake. Clip the kerb slightly, don't go too high over there, you see how much it unsettles the car. Now slow it all down, neat and tidy time. Get as close to these curves as you can about touching them. And on the power, 950 to 1,000 horsepower when you're coming out of the corner with the boost on. Absolutely fantastic acceleration. Now for the fast left hand, just a small blend of the throttle through there. You can probably go through there flat if you're feeling a little bit uh, confident, but I want to make sure I get around. 
Now again, good to be neat entirely down here. When you aren't using the boost, the car is effectively rear wheel drive, so it's quite easy to get the car squirrely if you're being a little bit too optimistic with the throttle. There you go, nice through here. Now for miss, hit, miss. Can we get it right? Uh, yeah, we did. Nice. OK, cool. Right, we want to break quite early for this hairpin. So, so easy to lock up through here with the change of elevation. You see a little light coming on there. If you go back in the video at the top of the cockpit, that's just showing that I've locked up. Again, turning off my boost when I can. I want to try and have 100% when I come uh, to climb the hill in a couple of corners time. Not this one. We're using a bit too much boost there. We're going to cut it there at 69% because that's a hilarious number. Fifth gear, and now we want to be long on the brakes here for this right-hander so we can have as much boost as possible for this uphill. I'm not being very efficient in my hybrid right now. Oh, a bit wide there, nearly clipped the curve. That would have been a spin if I kept on the throttle. But all the way up to 293 k's there. Now it's about just being smooth up the hill. The speed is going to bleed off because we have downforce and we're going uphill. And when you come off the hybrid, you go from about 950 horsepower down to about 500 horsepower from the diesel ICE engine. Flat through here. Oh, a little bit of a wiggle in the wheel there, but didn't look too bad on screen. Again, flat through this right-hander. Easy peasy, and then brake at the crest. And again, very long on that brake pedal. Just going to make sure we keep the hybrid going. Tiny bit of boost coming up for the carousel. Now, most cars like this have to go around, but we can go through. Let's attack it. Second gear. You, can, you cannot see the exit when going through. You have to just know it's there. Such a cool sensation. It's kind of unique to this car, actually. And now we go back uphill. All about threading the needle up here between the really high curves. Hold the brake. There you go. Don't be too impatient through there. Just clip the curve a little bit, but the car was nice. So easy to understeer there if you're not careful. All about patience through that section. But this, this is not. This is all about attacking. On the brake a bit for boost. Throw it in over the curve. Their car wiggles as it comes off the curb to the inside, then back on the power over the crest. Very nice. Hold the brake on the way in. Down the third gear. Then back up the fourth. You're in between gears through here a little bit. We can use a bit of boost coming out of here because we're already at 100%. Out of YouTube corner, TM. Very difficult over the crest of the car, understeering from the front. Well, where else is it going to understeer from? Now we're going to put a little bit of brake on just before we go over this little jump here. Make sure we don't lift off. There you go. We did a little bit, but it's OK. Again, all that fretting the needle through here. What's our boost like? We can lose a bit of that down here. Quite a long section, so using the boost at the top of the hill is actually quite beneficial. And now again, very long on the brake pedal for this right-hander. Here we go. Back on the power. If I keep momentum while saving in this car, such a unique car to drive in that aspect. Now through the carousel two, worst corner on the circuit. Boost is looking good though, 88%, we'll gain a little bit more back coming through this right-hander. And now we're going to put the car over to the right-hand side of the circuit where it's less bumpy and unleash our entire battery pretty much. What's that speed climb? 325 kilometers an hour on the straight, that's going to peel off now. That's downforce as it's job, and unfortunately the ICE can't keep pushing us through this air resistance, but uh, just goes to show you how crazy the boost is in this thing. Again, just staying on the right-hand side of the track, a little bit less bumpy over here from my experience. And then we'll come back over for the apex here. Coming down here now, very, very easy to loop it. Coming down this last section is a very horrible bump. This car does not react well, so I've got to be very careful on the way in here. There on the side of the caution site, there you go. Not the fastest through there, but it's safe. Coming to the last corner, what's the time going to be? What is it, Mr. Spotter? It's a 5.33.767, I think that was, or 676. Six. Like, I'm very bad with sixes and sevens, but there you go, guys. Faster than the Porsche 919 hybrid. Of course, the 919 we're comparing against is from a set of course, and I think is actually a year older than this car. But it's a victory nonetheless, and I've got to say, this game in VR... It's pretty damn good. Uh, I think this is probably the nicest game to look at when in VR. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the kind of different FOV style for this video. iRacing is a different style to a set of Corsa. If you did like the video, then make sure to hit that like button. If you really enjoyed it, of course, make sure to hit subscribe and the bell notification icon because that way you'll be made notified of future streams and future videos. Now I'm kind of thinking, guys, that I'm going to start splitting up the leaderboard into road cars and race cars and maybe do a kind of different series for each. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But anyway, guys, thank you to patrons and sponsors. You guys are awesome, and I love you lots. Take care. Have an awesome day. See you all next time.